Let's have a look at coming up with a plan for our paired comparison experiment. So, one of the big advantages of having a paired experiment is that we don't need as many people. So, because I'm going to have one group of people doing both tests, it means that if I had 30 in the original group, then in each group, in each for each test, I'm going to get 30 data values. Okay, so that's a big advantage for the paired comparison. If I was doing it as two independent groups, I'd have to split them in half and only have 15 in each side. So what I want to do is I need to think about the order in which those treatments are going to be given. So I need to randomly assign them to which one I'm going to do first, and every student could get it in a different order. So I need to write out a very specific list of instructions. And it needs to be detailed enough that somebody else could pick up my instructions and do it from that exactly. So the other thing I need to know how to do is how I'm going to record my data. So for paired data, I'm going to have two groups of data. So I'm going to have my control group and my treatment group. And I'm if I was looking at the writing time for my dominant and non-dominant hand, then I'd be writing down, you know, 36 seconds here and um, 48 seconds here and I'm just going to have a list of so each row is one person and each column refers to all the data in that category and then I'm going to go on and find the difference which is the when I subtract those two so here's things I need to think about in my plan I need to describe who my participants are and I need to state what my sample size is I need to describe my treatment group and control group. So I'm going to be able to say my treatment group is, my control group is. I need to know the response variable. So that's what, is I, what I am measuring, um, and that needs the units with it as well. Then I need the instructions specifically, and it must include how that random allocation is going to work. So how am I going to choose which student does their dominant hand first and which student does their non-dominant hand first? Then um, I need an explanation of how I'm going to collect my data and record those results. Lastly, I want to look for any sources of variation. So these are in an experiment, we want to control everything except for the one thing that we're testing. So we need to identify some of those things that we want to control. So here's an, uh, an example. So the question was, is I wonder if writing with your dominant hand has an effect on the time it takes to write a passage compared with using your non-dominant hand for students in MAS2 at OSC in 2018. So I can identify who my participants are. Who am I going to be doing the test on? Well, the experiment is going to be done on students in MAS2 at OSC in 2018. And you can see I've been quite specific about who they are. Then I know my, need to know my treatment variable. So that's thinking about what is my treatment group and what is my control group. So the default, remember, for your control is whatever the standard is and your treatment is what you're doing differently. So in this case, your control would be those that write with their dominant hand because that's the normal way of things. And your treatment is the other one. The treatment in this case would be students writing with their non-dominant hand. Then... I need to know the response variable. So what is it that I am measuring? And for this one, we are going to measure the length of time that students take to write that passage. And it, we're going to do it um, twice, once for treatment and once for control. And I'm going to measure this with a stopwatch, so I'm being specific about the um, how I'm going to collect the data. And I'm going to measure it in the number of seconds. So I've given my units. Okay, so here's some step-by-step -step instructions. So I'm going to find out the sample size of all the students present. So say I had 28 students in my class on that day. I'm going to divide that in half. So that's going to give me 14. So that tells me that I need to have 14 students doing the test with their dominant hand first, and 14 will do the dominant hand second. All right, now I'm going to have the appropriate number of pieces of paper and I'm going to have, like I've got two little examples there, I've got either dominant and then non-dominant, or non-dominant and then dominant. 
So if I've going to have 28 in the class, I'm going to have 14 of these pieces of paper, 14 of those pieces of paper. Then I might just put all those together in a box or in a bag, shake them up so they're all shuffled, and then each student is going to be randomly choosing a piece of paper out of the box, and it'll be one of these two pieces. So that means that there will be equal numbers in both groups. So once they know which hand they're going to do first, so the one that's on the top is the one that they're going to do first, I'm then going to have a whiteboard on my whiteboard. Um, I'll use the data projector and I'm going to get a stopwatch projected onto that screen. I need students to get themselves a pen and make sure that they can see the whiteboard. Okay. Then I will give students their instructions. So what's going to happen is there will be a paragraph that is going to be displayed on the whiteboard. And as soon as I put that paragraph up, I'm going to start my stopwatch and students need to copy down that paragraph. When they've finished, they're going to look at the time and they're going to record that time on their paper. Okay, so it means that in terms of the piece of paper, if they were doing their dominant hand first and they got a time of 28 seconds, they would write 28 seconds there. And then if they did their non-dominant hand and did the test and they got 45 seconds, that's what they would write on the piece of paper. So once they've done that, the students are going to switch their pen to the other hand. So if they did dominant first, they'll switch to the non-dominant, or if they did non-dominant first, they'll switch to dominant. They're going to then repeat that whole test and record their results on that paper. So then I need to collect all those papers, and I'm going to record the data on a Google Sheet, and I've given a little example of what the data is going to look like. So I'm going to have my dominant hand times in one column, my non-dominant hand times in another column, and I'm going to have the differences in a third column. And lastly, I'm going to say thank you to the students. Um, and that is my instructions. So the last thing I need to do is I need to think about the sources of variation. So what is it that I need to control because it could affect my response? Now remember, our response variable is the writing time. Okay, so I'm interested in what is going to, what things would affect the writing time. So, one thing I want to do is I want to make sure my instructions are given very clearly at the start. So that means that as soon as I start the stopwatch, they are all starting at exactly the same time. Because if they were busy talking to each other or they'd got a bit distracted and didn't know what to do, they wouldn't start at exactly the right time. So that's something that I will control. Another thing that I can try to control is how far away the students are from the whiteboard. So obviously I can project it onto a screen and so I can get a large stopwatch showing on there. Um, but I need to make sure that the students can all clearly see. Because if some students were sitting at the back and couldn't see very well, then that would affect their writing time. Okay, um, And so that's why I want to control for it. Another one that I might control is I might ask students to all use the same utensils. So all use pens or all use pencils. If they're using the same thing, then we're going to get consistent results. Okay, Because it might be that the ink, when you write a passage with one or the other, that one is actually easier due to friction, due to the flow of the ink, due to all sorts of things. It could be that one or the other is easier. And so we want to be consistent and make everybody do the same, so control it. And that's some example for you.